Welcome back to Trojan Sports Now and football season right around the corner. We decided to talk to the man himself this week, the head coach of the football team, Larry Blaney. Coach, thanks for joining us here. Well, it's good to be here. And coach, as I said, football is right around the corner. I know your guys are just waiting to see somebody else on the other side of the There's ball. There's no, no question. We practiced against each other for a long time now, and we, you know, we got a week and a half here uh, to, try to try to finalize plans and uh, – Get ready for UAB, which is our target, certainly, opening game at Legion Field, 11 a.m. on, uh, on uh, September 1, and uh, looking forward to it. And, and looking forward to finding out just how good we are and find out, you know, if, if the, the work we put in is going to pay us some dividends. Now, have you already started working on the game plan for UAB? We have. We have, and, uh, and we feel like we need needed to start a little early because they've got a new head coach and we're going to have to study a lot of people to try to predict what we might see offensively, defensively, and, and otherwise in the game. And so it'll probably be an adjustment game for us, though, as we go in and uh, uh, try to be ready for uh, a broad spectrum of things and then, and then narrow it down as we get into the game. And uh, But Garrett McGee's the new head coach there. And, uh, you know, this series has been back and forth and close, and so we expect it to be a heck of a game. Now, he came from Arkansas, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So uh, you're familiar with them. Is, does that help you out at all in game planning? Well, it helps a little bit, but we, at least we know who to study. Right. You know, we study Arkansas uh, on really both sides of the ball because the defense coordinator came with him. Okay. Uh, came was a linebacker coach up there and came with him from Arkansas. And uh, as I think he – Garrett McGee was Coach McGee was at Northwestern as the OC offensive coordinator before, so uh, you know we we uh, we're trying to make sure that we don't miss any pieces to the to the game plan approach as as far as what he has done in the past. Now I know the last time uh, Troy headed up to Legion Field, things looked good until the yeah. final second of the game. Um, right. Does that play into this this go round? Do you tell your players? What, what happened last time up there and try to a little extra motivation well there. you know I, I hope it motivates us to, to, to play better you know uh, uh, we kicked them dead on the one yard line when and they started that drive and they were able to work it to midfield or so to be able to throw the ball up uh, and have a chance for that play which turned out to be basically the last play of the game and uh, you got to give them credit for that and uh, you know and, and we've got to try to learn from it and try to go back uh, into that same sanctuary, so to speak, and, and make sure that we, we play better and, and we're, we don't give them those opportunities. Now, something uh, different with the schedule this year is you've got six home games right after the UAB game, uh, two home games in a row starting off with a, a conference game. Mm -hmm. um, how does that feel for the team this year, having six home games and, well, and some good home games? Well, I talk about it a lot when I speak to uh, groups, but, uh, you know, in the SEC, they play eight home games. Right. And they always play a one double A, and you know, so, you know, our, our guys, our guys have to be road warriors or have had to be, and this is no exception. Really, we're gonna still play half the games away from home, but six home games is something new for us. I, it's been a while since we played uh, six home games. I, I don't remember exactly what year it was, but it's good to be able to come to the co friendly confines of, of this stadium. And uh, we've got a pretty good home record over the years uh, uh, since we've been here. It's been pretty pretty strong. And uh, so uh, it, it's a great local uh, low travel schedule because we play eight games in the state of Alabama, including UAB and South Alabama in late September, their first ever Sun Belt game. And then the four top teams in the league uh, last year, come to Troy. That's a that's a good good thing, and because uh, you're playing the best teams from last year, which they'll probably be good again. And and um, you know you got them at home, plus Mississippi State and Navy at home, which our people are all wild and crazy about. You know, and excited, and that's good. And you know, I'm sure we'll hopefully sell some of those games out. Now let's talk about South Alabama a little bit. That's going to be their first year in the Sun Belt. Mm -hmm. um, Never played them before because they're a really new program. Um, just talk about that new rivalry and how how that's going to be. Well, it is it is going to be a, a natural rivalry, and uh, you know there's all, already been great competition between the two schools and all the other sports. And uh, you know uh, they have done, in my opinion, I've said all along they will have an impact on our league early. Uh, and uh, they they had Joey Jones as their head coach. He's got a great reputation. He's hired good coaches. Uh, and I think the way they went about this thing, they built some great facilities in football. 
they got a great stadium uh, that's been afforded to them there for a period of time. I'm not sure how long. And, and But they have played people that they knew they had a great chance to beat the first 18 games of their history right. and won every one of them. So they, what did that do? That created a, a fan base. Everybody wants to be a part of that, you know. And they, I, so I think it's a very wise thing that they did, and the way they have approached developing their early stages of program has set them up to be successful early. And I think uh, you know they'll be a, they'll be a factor. And yet, you, as you said, uh, their first conference game will be against Troy, and that'll be a good chance for a lot of Troy fans to get down there in the Mobile because it is not uh, a bad drive to no. Ladd Stadium. Well. I tell you what, when we played uh, Central Michigan in the bowl, I was so impressed with our turnout and, and the total turnout. But our turnout was fabulous. And, uh, you know, the in the hotel before the bowl game and at the stadium when we arrived at the stadium, there our people were there. And, uh, you, know, I, 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 you know, I've called it fellowship so long it's become a term almost. But, you know, I think uh, our fellowship is, is, is growing. Now, like, Last year didn't help our fellowship a whole lot, and when you when you don't win, and that's something that that'll drive a coach crazy, and it drives our people crazy, and, and I, you know I, I I hope that we can certainly turn that around. Now, are you doing anything different with this year's team um, from last year's uh, three and nine season? Are you are you doing practices any different, uh, speeches well, any different, anything like that? Well, we. Uh, we we went back to the drawing board, so to speak. All all of the all of our support people came in to me first in January and said, "Hey, what can we do?" So there's Richard Shaughnessy, Chuck Ash has been with me every game. So Richard Shaughnessy has been with me around 15 years in strength and condition. Our, I'm James Gardner, our, our equipment guy, Tony Ferrani, our ops guy, and assistant AD, and you know they all wanted to know what they could do. And so, and then we, we carried that into everybody looking in the mirror and self-evaluating. Coaches, players, uh, everybody. And, and so we, we put together a plan. We went through an octagon time, which is a mind over matter, early morning, you know, eight times in the course of, of uh, February, uh, right after recruiting is over and right before spring ball. And we got great response and, and great work out of that. Our uh, accountability challenge is something we've, we've always done. We put coaches on each team this year, and, and that accountability challenge produced uh, a lot of good, good things, uh, uh, more, more, uh, uh, more hours of community service than we've ever had produced. And, uh, you know, just a lot of positive stuff. And spring ball was good. Recruiting was good. Uh, even though we had had a negative season, we we uh, we turned it into into a, a momentum changer for us to work harder, get better, and hopefully we'll see some results of that. Now, with the season uh, just around the corner, as I said, do you still get a pregame jitter, a jitters before a game or, or before the season? Well, you know, a couple of months before. <laughs> but, uh, no, I tell you what, you always anticipate, uh, and you and you. There are certain times that are calming to you when you're working and and practicing and leading up to. Uh, a season or a game, but as you close in on that game, uh, you know it's uh, and everybody's a little different. But I, you know, I do have the butterflies and the and the you know the stomach gets a little tight and and uh, you know try to you try to deal with it the best way you can. And you, I think what I do is I try to I try to find things uh, after we're ready to go and we're prepared. I try to find things to distract me, you know, and it, it might be a, a TV show, it might be go to a movie, or or it might be you know, read a book, or it might be something else, you know. All right, Coach. Uh, well, one other thing that uh, recently happened to you is, you is you were inducted into the inaugural class of the Troy Hall of Fame. Um, just talk about that honor. Well, I, you know, I, I'm very, very honored, number one, and I, and I was excited about it. And and, uh, and 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 felt very blessed to be in the inaugural class. Uh, uh, but after and I did, I had not I had not been in the arena until that night. And when I walked in that arena and saw what all the work it had been done in that beautiful place, and I and I know uh, that there the, the Tony Ferrani and and James Gardner and Jamal Smith and all of our managers and all of our 
video guys and everybody had put a lot of work in, in, into preparing for the evening. Yes. And when I walked in that uh, place that night, it was it was a phenomenal uh, view. And uh, you know, I, and it, it was it was uh, it was really a great experience for me as an inductee. Uh, they did it. The program was set up perfectly. Uh, you guys did all of our all of our uh, uh, acceptance talks, and we didn't have to do anything but enjoy the night and and visit with our people. And you know, it was a great Troy reunion. Well, congrats on that. And we're going to wrap this up this interview with five fun questions for you. Uh, we're going to start it off with your favorite movie. Uh, my favorite late movie is Hope Springs. Okay, why is that? I was just I, my, my age group. Uh, basically, I enjoyed the two the two actors, uh, and, and uh, the three actors really. Steve Carell was also okay. in that movie. And, uh, but uh, my wife and I went to it together and, and sat through it together, and I think it really it really reinforced some things uh, for us as as uh, uh, folks who've been married a good good number of years, and uh, so and hopefully refreshed us a little bit. Uh, favorite food. Oh man, I like everything. I, uh, I was raised uh, in a in a small town and uh, had access to a lot of vegetables over, over. But I, I like everything. Uh, probably my favorite uh, uh, is maybe meatloaf. Okay, meatloaf. Uh, favorite music you like to listen to? Well, I'm a country and western more. You know, I don't get uh, and I like some bluegrass, uh, but I don't. I, I'm I'm in the middle, okay. you know, and I like some rock, classic rock, right. and some of the music that I grew up on, and uh, so. Uh, but I'm I'm pretty pretty easy to please musically. All right, the last book you read? Well, I'm reading Unbroken, which uh, you and I talked about. Uh, Unbroken is about uh, a, a guy and and that grew up uh, in Jersey, I think, and wound up going wound up being in World War II, flying a bomber crashing in the Pacific, had to fight off sharks for 40-something days. And now I'm, I'm got, I mean, he's in a POW camp now. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to finish reading it right now because it is a gripping uh, uh, story. Right, it is a great book. And what do you like to do in your free time when you can just get away from the football complex, just be alone? If I had my uh, druthers, I'd be on a golf course Okay. playing golf. All right. Well, Coach, uh, good luck on the upcoming season, and thank you for joining us here today. Thank you very much. All right, stay tuned for what's coming up this week in Troy Sports. Trojan Sports Now.